Sultan Nazarbayev has been on a business trip around the Mangistau region. 35 years ago, the Mangishlag Peninsula was separated from the Guriev region, and that date became the official date of establishment of the Mangistau region. At an official meeting in the region's administration, the head of state congratulated local residents on the region's birthday. The Mangistau region is currently one of the most rapidly developing areas in the Republic, with its development ranking second only to Astana. The Aktau city project of the future is being built in the region as well as a large number of large-scale production enterprises and the centre for supporting maritime oil operations, with the seaport being expanded too. With such rapid development rates, the region has already faced an energy shortage problem, with the issues being more acute in the rural areas, which is why today's statement made by the President concerning the decision to construct a nuclear power station in the Mangistau region is very good news for everyone who lives there. Rapid economic development always requires new sources of power. In compliance with my request, the government and Kazatomprom, together with their Russian colleagues, are preparing for the construction of a nuclear power station in the region. It is important to finish the work on time and we cannot rely on natural gas alone. Another important issue that President Nur Sultan Nazarbayev spoke about during the meeting was agriculture in the region, which needs a good food supply. The President stated that this problem can be solved by the region without assistance. Talking about poor land, I'd like to mention the State of Israel, which exists on sand and stone, but manages to supply strawberries to Kazakhstan during the winter. Our soil is much better, and everyone needs to use the best of his skills and technology. In Aktau, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev had a pleasant surprise as he became the first honoured citizen of the Mangistau region. This area, which is mostly populated by expats, was a desert two years ago. Under the President's commission, a new school for 1,200 places was built here. Then the Head of State examined new facilities for the support of maritime oil operations in Bautina village from a helicopter. The village has strategic importance for Kazakhstan's oil and gas industry. Also, the Head of State was given a presentation of the most prospective investment projects that will be implemented in the region in the near future. He also visited the Museum of Taras Shevchenko, the concluding part of the working visit was the visit to the recently reconstructed clinic in Bautina village. This clinic was equipped at the expense of the Ajip company. The head of state presented the clinic with an ambulance. The visit to the Mangistau region was the last on the list of Nur Sultan Nazarbayev's working visits and he gave a positive appraisal to the quality of its growth, both in social and economic terms. Rectors of Kazakhstan's universities should pay more attention to student upbringing in order for them to become scientific and public leaders, according to the main statement made by the Kazakhstan Presidential Chief of Staff, Kairat Kelimbetov, at a meeting with the heads of the Republic's leading universities. The President of the country defined the key prospects of development for national universities in April this year at a sitting with the rectors. During the meeting with Mr. Kelimbetov, the parties discussed the implementation of the given tasks and what they should do in order to improve the level of Kazakhstan education using contemporary approaches and international experience, as well as some domestic scientific projects. The participants in the sitting also spoke about the formation of patriotism in young people, as well as crime prevention and inter-ethnic accord. According to the head of the presidential administration, the president pays a great deal of attention to the education system in the country as Kazakhstan's future success is built today in its schools and universities. The president set five tangible tasks which, in the near future, are to be the priorities for national universities. First of all, such universities have to take leading positions in the general rankings of the Republic's higher educational institutions and obtain international accreditation, which will confirm its competitiveness. Secondly, the head of state pointed out the issues of young people's patriotic upbringing, which is today a matter of state and strategic importance. As a result, we need to work on it very hard. National universities are amongst the breakthrough projects. All those tasks were set for the rectors of the national universities in order to make them take charge of them. In the near future, the issues and prospects of development for Kazakhstan's education are to top the agenda of an international forum, which is expected to feature leading experts from Kazakhstan and abroad. As a result of the meeting, the Ministry for Education and Science promised to adopt a special republic-wide programme aimed at upbringing improvements in universities. Almaty has hosted the 13th meeting of the Council on the Cultural Cooperation of Member States of the CIS, involving the CIS Ministers. 
There were about 10 cultural related issues on the agenda from the adaptation of legislation, a coordinated policy in the area of art and the cooperation of theatres, libraries and archives. Delegates also spoke about their country's experiences. The guests showed their interest in the Kazakhstan State Cultural Heritage Programme. As well as accepting the national documents, we have also accepted Kazakhstan's offer. We have accepted the positive experience of the Ministry on the creation and realization of the Cultural Heritage State Programme and recommended that this experience is taken into consideration during the work with the recommendations of the Cultural Heritage Chamber, including archives, libraries and museums. The ministers came to an agreement about joint filmmaking and distribution, and a related project has already been prepared. The final decision must be taken by the president at the next meeting. It is also expected that the national libraries of the CIS will be united into a single network and whereby everyone will be able to read theses and scientific works from the entire Commonwealth at home. According to the delegates, this step will provide new impetus for the development of science and education in the whole CIS territory. A new iron foundry has opened in Balhash. The implementation of this 655 million tenge project was the result of cooperation between the National Investment Fund of Kazakhstan and the Russian Stalprojekt Institute. The construction of the new metallurgy plant took less than two years with the factory's unique oven having been designed in accordance with a Russian project enabling the production of cast iron from waste material, avoiding the use of expensive agglomerate. Now we have an opportunity to produce cast iron without using any expensive agglomerate, which enables us to reduce the cost of our output and increase labor efficiency. This is one of the real and tangible implementations of Kazakhstan's industrial and innovation strategy, which was approved by the president of our country, Nursultan Nazarbayev. This is an epoch-making event. Scientists from all over the world have been searching for such technology for many years now and we have successfully reached such an achievement. The new plant's capacity is slightly over 30,000 tonnes of cast iron per year, but specialists say an increase in production, if necessary, will not require much investment and time. Another important advantage of the plant is in its more ecologically friendly emissions compared with factories using classical technology. Kazakhstan's residents can now exercise their rights to medical care more fully as the situation in its regions, according to the health care minister, has recently improved. Anatoly Denovoy presented his report to members of the human rights organization under the president. New hospitals and clinics are being opened more often and the number of citizens who can receive free medicine and medical care is increasing. However, such problems as staff shortages and the unsystematic prevention on socially important illnesses has not been solved. Under the mission of the head of state, the preparation of the new health code is in process and parliamentary working groups are discussing and taking into consideration the claims and wishes that were expressed at the meeting. The Commission recommended that the Ministry works out a state programme on the struggle against diabetes to introduce effective outpatient medical provisions, introduce nutritional controls and, of course, to raise the quality of service. The Minister announced that it has recently created a Commission on Medical Ethics. A village in the Kislodar region has a Soviet and patriotic name being the Third International and contains representatives of 11 nationalities who speak both their native and the state languages fluently. When the representative of another nation speaks Kazakh, it brings nations together. For instance, it is pleasant for me when my friends speak Turkish to me. Together with his family, Telman Diamorashev, was deported from the Caucasus to Kazakhstan in 1944, at a time when 33 Caucasian families were already settled here. Now there are 115 Caucasian families living here and have become related to Kazakh families. In the local schools, children from Korean, Turkish, Azerbaijani and other families can learn Kazakh national customs and traditions in open classrooms. Alexander Kim, who is a teacher of computer science, teaches his subject in the Kazakh language, and other than his own specialism, the young specialist is also keen on the art of the great Kazakh poet, Abai Kunumbayev. 
Yahya Arifov teaches the basic military course in both the Kazakh and the Russian languages. The main pride of the village residents is the real friendship which they received from their ancestors and were able to save.